I was called to remove a colony of bees from underneath the shed and as you can see once the side of the shed was lifted up the, uh, the cones were exposed and I had to crawl underneath to take the combs off. Basically the way I do this is I get a common or garden kitchen knife and cut the combs from where they happen to be and in this case it was the underside of the shed and then I put them into wooden frames securing them with plastic mesh and then stapling them on. And as you can see the, uh, the situation is quite tricky under there because the combs are right underneath I'm having to look underneath the corner of the shed or the side of the shed and the the combs were right over my face so I don't know if you can see in the video but there are plenty of bees flying around and of course they as I cut the combs off from the underside of the shed some of them fell on my face and down my neck and uh, I, only, I only got stung a few times which is uh, which is good <laughs> um, you can see here that I'm stapling the plastic mesh around the combs which uh, is a much much easier than other methods that people use with string and rubber bands it's, uh, it's particularly be better to use the plastic mesh when you've got gloves on in this case I'm not wearing gloves and as you can see the comb is suspended in the frame and here is some brood and you may be able to see some white larvae just along the edge of the comb uh, edge of the brood so this uh, plastic mesh holds the comb in the frame so I can put them into the hive and uh, remove all the combs from the underside of the shed put them in the new hive box and this makes the bees much more inclined to, to go into the box. So once I've got all the uh, all the combs cut from the um, from the shed, and because it, as you pull the combs or cut the combs from the the the, 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 uh, the in this case the shed, the queen is often left behind underneath the shed and so all the bees will cluster around where they've been for perhaps some months and they'll cluster around the queen so what I then have to do having removed all the combs and put them into the hive I then have to try and get the, the, the bees into the box and the way I often do this is to position the box or a ramp underneath where the bees actually are making it sort of as close as I can. In this case what I'm doing is putting a ramp literally underneath the shed with the hive box lifted up so that the the ramp f is right underneath where the bees are clustered and so when I brush the bees off the the underside of the shed the they fall onto that ramp and their natural instinct is to crawl uphill and at the top of the ramp they find the hive box so as you can see there's quite a big cluster of bees under there probably oh I should think about the size of a football uh, maybe 20,000 bees and uh, the queen in there somewhere you never can tell where the queen is and so my plan is to brush them off the underside of that shed onto that ramp they will walk up the ramp onto the um, front of the on, onto the entrance to the, of the hive and work their way in. And although you can't actually see it from here, what I what I'm doing is I brush the, the the bees onto that ramp, and they within about 20 minutes or half an hour, they had all run up into the box. Uh, there were very few left, bees left behind, just a few flying around. I closed the box up and took them away. Once the uh, once the hive is taken away, there will be a few bees left behind, but um, they can't re-establish themselves. And I, I would think if there was 200 bees left behind, um, 200 out of probably 20,000 bees, 
only represents a very small proportion, and so they don't the the colony won't feel the loss. So another successful removal, and the uh, the shed can now be moved to to its new location, and hopefully no one will get stung in the process, apart from me that is. <laughs>